Welcome, everybody. This is Dan Tomaszewski with Everything MSP, and uh, we'll kick off things in just a moment as people are entering the room here. And uh, I have Drew here, uh, Drew Slusso. Did I say that right? Slusso. I love it. Let's go. Slusso. There we go. Um, you know, you would think that with uh, having the last name Tomaszewski that I could pronounce any other name that's out there, you know, and uh, I mean, I have heard every pronunciation of my last name from ride a jet ski to whatever. So <laughs> it's uh, it's great. My, my kids were able to learn the alphabet at a very young age just by spelling our last name. So, uh, but Drew, welcome. Uh, Drew is the director of product marketing with Wasabi. And uh, welcome, Drew. Hey, thanks, Dan. Great to be here. Uh, yeah, you can just call me Drew. Uh, I, I, I have a I have a, a little book of all the nicknames I've uh, acquired over the years, and I'm yeah. just going to stick with Drew. I think that's the simplest way to put it. There you go. My my dad's first name is Bob, and he likes it because you can spell it backwards and <laughs> he'll, you know get it right. So. <laughs> Um, that's great. And uh, we're here to talk about some, uh, some very important stuff. Uh, we'll jump into that. Um, we also have uh, some exciting stuff. We've got a awesome giveaway. Um, so make sure you hang tight till the end of today's event because we've got a Bluetooth stereo turntable, um, which is awesome. That is, that is killer. In fact, I was just mentioning to, to Drew before we joined here um, that my 14-year-old, she wanted to have uh, a turntable like this for Christmas this past year, and she's buying all kinds of vinyl. And, uh, and it's amazing because they're, uh, they're a lot more expensive than they were when I was a kid. <laughs> so, you know, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so, Drew, um, tell Tell us a little bit more uh, about you. Um, we're we're going to talk about today, uh, and actually, let me just jump in. We're going to talk about uh, growing your business with Wasabi Cloud Storage. Um, storing your customers' data is the key to building a uh, strong foundation for your business. Um, data data is critical these days, right? I mean, without data, um, our customers are are gone. I mean, they're they're out out of business. Um, you know, and the trick is to optimize the spend and time uh, providing the storage service. And with Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage, you can create more customers for life, which is the key in our business. Um, yep. We want to keep those customers for the long term, and we have to leverage great tools like Wasabi to help us achieve that. Um, so we want to use it to develop strong recurring revenue stream and uh, do all this in a simple manner with the Wasabi account control panel. Uh, or control manager, I should say. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, with that being said, uh, give us a little, give us a little background about yourself, Drew. <laughs> well, I was born on a butterfly milk farm in New Jersey. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> wrap, 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 wrap your heads around that one. Right. Uh, so, I, I've been working in storage a long time, uh, my whole career. Uh, Sun Microsystems, Quantum, EMC. Um, Infinidat and now Wasabi. Uh, I just, I got some advice early on in my career, which was storage is never going to go away. It may transform, but you're in a great industry, stick with it, you know, and, and do a great job. Um, you know, it's been, uh, especially moving into the storage as a service space, it's been an eye opener. Uh, it's, it, it's remarkable how many people are adopting cloud storage, cloud services, and in some degrees, how many people aren't, right? So the, the, the TAM, the market opportunity is still so massive, right? And, and what Wasabi does is makes it simple. Um, you know, the, the, the two guys, the gentleman who created Carbonite, who you might uh, recognize yeah. that name, uh, they saw an opportunity to create a simpler, less expensive cloud storage option. And uh, they jumped all over it. And, and thankfully they did because uh, we believe, right, that uh, having less expensive storage that does the same job as the hyperscalers is really a key enabler for anybody's business because, you know, the data is the not going to go away. Uh, 
Right. In fact, nobody ever gets rid of data. It's kind of like my wife and shoes. They just, <laughs> they just keep piling up. Yeah. Um, you know, build a, build a second closet for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honey. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. Because, you know, when you take a look at a traditional file cabinet back in our, our, our <laughs> paper, right. I mean, there was a point where you're trying to close it and the doors just won't close anymore. The drawers were full. And now, um, you know, it's, it's infinite um, and uh, the sky's the limit. Um, and we, we have become digital pack rats. And uh, so we have to be able to have a safe um, and secure solution for our clients to be able to store that data. Yeah. Well, the good news is, you know, within that problem for the MSPs is, 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 is tremendous opportunity. Right. And uh, tell you what, why don't I, why don't I just go ahead? Yeah. Hopefully this, this works. Let me jump in, give you some visuals here. Uh, da, da, da. We'll do that. Um, are you seeing the right slide there? Yes. We see the Wasabi closes deals based on the three. Yeah. That was the wrong slide. Okay. Oh. Let's go to the right side. Um, so you know who I am. We've already covered that. So this is this is the point, right? Um, if you're not selling cloud storage today, if you're if you're letting your customers kind of dictate, you know where and how they store their data, um, I think you're missing out on an opportunity. And that's because data has tremendous gravity, right? Where the data goes, where the data lives, um, is going to become or is the center of the universe for your customers. So why not? you know, get them over into a storage uh, system, a storage service that you, right, can add value to. And because the price is so cost effective, you can add additional services to that, right? You can do things like uh, auditing the unstructured data that they have using uh, a partner of ours, Operavi, right? Let them know what do they have, Right. What are their what is their exposure in terms of, you know, information that is covered under various governance and compliance rules? Um, you know, and and against uh, that I, advice here is the wrong cloud storage or the wrong storage. Um, that's going to create a black hole of expenses. Right. Um, you know, in some cases, on prem storage, it, you know, makes perfect sense. Right. The 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 performance is 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 critical in many times, especially in restoring backups. Uh, but I would say that you definitely need to have a cloud storage option. Add that to your line card. And, and part of the reason is right. The the use cases, right. Backup and recovery is probably our number one use case right now. Uh, every MSP is offering some kind of service, whether themselves or through uh, another service provider, let's say MSP 360, right, to make sure that the data is secure. Uh, with cloud storage, of course, now object storage in particular, you can, um, you can um, bring immutability into the picture, really provide very, very strong protection uh, for that data. Archiving, of course, the cloud makes perfect sense. I'm going to tell you why hot cloud storage makes more sense. Okay. Um, data analytics, you know, some folks are doing it. Some folks aren't. Uh, that's kind of a preference for where your application lives and how easy it is to leverage uh, either on-prem or off-prem storage. And another great place we're seeing a lot of traction for cloud storage is in surveillance. Uh, the industry is finally coming around to how to leverage cloud storage as opposed to on-prem storage. That, that bottomless cloud is very, very attractive. Uh, you know, keep whatever it is, a day, a week, a month on-prem for high-speed recall. Um, and, you know, use the cloud for longer extended yeah. uh, maintenance, right? How about you, Dan? What are you seeing in, in terms of use cases? This uh, cover the board pretty well? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you you hit it right on with surveillance. Um, uh, ultimately, you know, people want to be able to go back a, a longer period of time. Um, you know, like you said, keep a period of time for, you know, quick access. But um, events happen that, uh, you know, people go, have to go back to, you know, they don't want to discard that data. They want to be able to go back knowing that, Hey, um, I, I don't want to be locked in to a point in which I'm only keeping, you know, a month at a time because 
we have found, found situations where there was some type of an issue in an environment uh, that happened three months ago, and we need to be able to get back right. to that, data, pull it up, and um, uh, you know, just doing a, a rotation of only a month at a time just doesn't cut it for for businesses. Yeah, and and like I said, I've been in storage a long time, so you know, we're at what four K now. Uh, I think six and eight K are right around the corner. Right. Um, you know, you're 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 doubling the capacity requirements. Yeah. Um, and the question is, do you want to double your bill? Well, no, you don't have to. So let me let me bash on the alternative for a moment because yeah. that's what I do. Um, if you if you look at what other folks offer, uh, they offer a lot of confusion. Okay, um, you know, AWS great ecosystem, tremendous uh, set of features and functions, but in their storage, uh, I don't see how anybody can really get excited about it. There's standard, there's intelligent tiering, there's infrequent access, single zone, uh, Glacier, gl they, they, they now have Glacier instant access. Good luck trying to figure that out and good luck trying to predict what it's going to cost you. And Azure and Google have similar, uh, similar tiering, right? The fact is, is that all this does is put a delay and, and add fees to your operations, all right? Um, it's easy to get in, right? Like I said, data has gravity and everybody wants you to start putting their data in because they know once you start, it's very hard to stop. Right. All right. Um, you know, here's another example uh, and probably one of my favorites, right? You get the bill and you're wondering what just happened. Um, you know, probably one of the, my, my, my best stories for folks is that um, the, the medical field, right? When COVID hit, they had to go back and pull back a ton of data in a very short amount of time because they needed it to work with the, the new data that was coming in for uh, finding a cure for COVID. Well, a lot of these folks were using the three-letter hyperscaler, rhymes with AWS, and when they pulled that data back, especially from the Glacier tier, the bill that they got at the end of that month was five to 10 times more than they had been paying just to store the data, all right? So when you're trying to A, convince your customers that the cloud is a good place and B, convince them that Wasabi is the place to go, this is probably one of the strongest uh, hammers, you know, to throw. Um, and here's the other illustration I like to use, and, and I got this, this was inspired from our CEO, right? Storage should be simple, okay? It really should just be, I need storage. I need it to respond when I when I want it to respond. I need it to be very performant when I'm giving it data. Okay, but instead, what you're given is is this whole section of well, uh, you know, what kind of power do you want? Uh, do you want infrequent access power, like you know, twelve hours, but not in a row? Um, do you want to just you know have a one grid? Right? Do you want wind generated, which means you only get the power when the wind is blowing? Do you want solar? You only get it when the sun is out? Um, no, it should be what's on the right here, okay? Always on, ready to work. You shouldn't have to have a degree you know, in finance to understand what to do. No, and I mean, it's, uh, I liken it to the airline industry and the, the low cost carriers that um, it might look like a great price, but then it's <laughs> if you want your seatbelt, um, if you want the air mask, if you want uh, uh, the the back of the seat, um, the oh. bottom of the seat, you know, the, every little piece gets added up. And um, would you like a cushion? Uh, would you like a headrest? Yes. And, um, you know, for landing, <laughs> do you want to jump out in a parachute because that would be the least expensive. Um, so, you know, there's not, nothing worse than, you know, trying to, as, as a business owner, when you're trying to put together pricing for your, your clients, you want to keep it simple. Um, and you, you don't want to be sideswiped with, um, you know, with, uh, the unknowns and the, the surprises, I guess is what I meant to say, um. And uh, that just be, that becomes quite a headache in trying to manage it, but also becomes a headache in ensuring customer satisfaction. Uh, I'll use another metaphor. Um, you know, uh, imagine 
going and buying a brand new refrigerator, right? You bring it home, plug it in, you stock it full of beverages and snacks. And on game day, right, you go and you open the door and on your phone, you hear bing <laughs> and you look down and it says door opening charge has been applied to your credit card. <laughs> right. You're like, wow, that's kind of strange. And then you grab a beverage and you take the beverage out and you hear bing, bing, bing. And there's yeah. another thing on your phone that says a uh, beverage removal charge has been applied to your credit card. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Right. And then you actually go back and look at the contract for your refrigerator because you're not buying a refrigerator, you're buying cooling as a service. Okay. Right. And, yeah. and suddenly there's this fine print that says for every time you take out a beverage or take out a snack or even open the door, right? Additional fees will be levied. Okay. You don't want that. And as you just said, right, when you're selling to your customer, right, the fact that you can sell them a predictable price is extremely powerful. All right. So to this point, right, this is where Wasabi can help you, right? So when you are proposing new services that have a dependency on data and data storage, all right, consider bringing Wasabi into the picture because A, we're 80% less than the hyperscalers. Or to put it another way, you get five times more storage with Wasabi at actually a lower price than any of the wow. hyperscalers. No API fees, no egress charges. You can open that, that refrigerator door and stand there and cool the whole house down. There's not gonna be any additional charge, right? The price is absolutely predictable and you can you pass that on to your customer, all right? The performance is there, fast uploads, fast downloads, right? There's private network options if you want to go even quicker. And of course, the protection is paramount, right? There's the redundancy, the durability, and the fact that you can employ immutable storage, right? And we were talking earlier before we went on, right? That immutability right now, in terms of ransomware protection, absolutely critical. Yeah, absolutely. There is a question uh, that came up. Uh, and if, if anybody does have questions as we go, please throw them into the Q&A or the chat. Uh, Valentino was wondering how Wasabi Cloud Storage, um, how, or I'm sorry, how can Wasabi Cloud Storage prevent cloud outage? Well, I, I, I don't think you can ever prevent cloud outage. No. Um, no. I think though, what we have done in terms of our uh, redundancy within our systems, uh, within our network, you know, within our whole architecture, um, you know, the, the, the performance speaks for itself. If you go to our website right now, uh, there is an option to see what our uptime has been across all of our locations globally. And you'll be happily surprised to see that for more than 12 months, we've had a hundred percent uptime. Wow. Okay. That's incredible. So yeah. And, and we are extremely, uh, transparent with our customers, with our, with our partners, right? In terms of any service, uh, any work that has to be done, right? We definitely notify folks, you know, weeks in advance, days in advance, hours in advance, if anything is gonna be unavailable for any period of time. And typically it's not the data access, it's typically, you know, updating something in terms of, uh, you know, let's say the account management uh, capabilities, right? If we're doing a quick upgrade there. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, no, I, I don't think anyone, I think Amazon has demonstrated for us, unfortunately, that you can't avoid all cloud outages. Typically that's, yeah, that's PEBCAC, right? Problem exists between keyboard and chair, right? Right. Somebody hits the wrong button. Um, I want to, uh, yeah, I'll let, I'll let the, uh, the, the dashboard of our uptime speak for itself. So, um, let's talk a little bit more about Wasabi then, if you don't mind. I mean, yeah. it is, uh, it is a company that, uh, is growing rapidly uh, thanks to uh, the fact that we have so many great MSP customers already uh, and their customers, of course. Um, you know, we're, we're five years in, Carbonite's founding team. Uh, we are the only hot cloud storage company, you know, completely and totally focused on storage. I think that's another thing that folks should recognize is that um, we don't have a hundred other features and functions that we have to compensate our revenue for, right? To, to cover those, those prices, right? We do one thing, we do it extremely well and we keep the price very, very competitive 
if not the best price in the industry. Some would argue that there's others out there that have you know slightly better prices. I would argue that they don't have uh, near enough quality or availability record to stand on to make those claims. Anyway, um, lots of customers, tons of channel partners, and the technical alliance partners I'll show you in a minute I think that's important to recognize that if you want to align with Wasabi, you are also aligning with hundreds of the same technical partners that you're already working with that we've already validated working with. We talked about pricing. This is probably a great, another great illustration of you know, what you could expect to pay if you were going to use anybody else. Um, and this it really drives the point home right now again. This is, I think, uh, I gotta, let me move the, the, the little pictures of you and me out of the way, right? This is a petabyte of storage. Now, obviously, I don't expect anybody to, to get a petabyte just yet. But if you do call me, I'd like the commission. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the example is, is, is there for, for illustrative purposes that it's not just the storage, right? What you're paying for in any other situation is access to your data. And that's just wrong, right? Nobody should be taxing me for taking a, a beverage out of my refrigerator. That, no. That's completely wrong. Um, and there's no tears, right? The data is always hot, always ready. There's no delays. Uh, a lot of, I, I mentioned this earlier, a lot of folks are really, really excited about the new tiers of Glacier and they should be, right? If you're going to put your data there and you know absolutely that you will never touch it, it's there for, you know, deep salt mine kind of archiving, great, go use it. Right, I'll warn you, the minute you pull any sizable chunk of data out of that tier, you have just completely blown the cost structure and you're now gonna pay way more than if you had just kept it in a hot storage cloud like Wasabi. Right. Um, let's see, oh, let me go back over here. So the question- The pricing, we're talking a significant difference in costs there and, um, you know, um, let's go back. You know, and when, when we take a look at what we do for our clients, um, we want to provide them with a quality service at affordable rates, right? We we do know that, um, you know, we don't want to be, when we take a look at pricing overall, right? You don't want to necessarily be the cheapest in the town and you don't want to focus just on price, but you also, you know, you want to focus on the quality of the service you're providing. And, um, and when you can find um, the match made in heaven where you get the solid price um, with the quality service, and then you can repurpose those additional dollars to other areas of their business, it's a huge win for you as an MSP. Um, you know, you're, you know, they might be strapped for doing their hardware refreshes. Um, you know, they might be, you know, in our business, we, we push for three-year replacement on desktops um, and four-year on servers. We can push it to four years on desktops and five years on servers. But some organizations, because of, you know, various components, but whether it be they're a nonprofit, um, could be just because of the state of the economy, um, there are reasons that they need to push that even longer. And so if we can repurpose some of those savings, allow them to have get new equipment, um, it just strengthens our relationship and is, is just a rock solid way to, uh, to build that customer for life. Absolutely, w without a doubt. And, and I think the other thing I forgot to mention is that uh, we, you know, there are real people working at Wasabi ready to talk to you right now about getting you signed up as a, as a reseller. Um, you know, we are not a fully automated automaton organization. Uh, we show up at the, at the regional, you know, MSP events. Uh, there was somebody there that you can talk to. You will have an account manager uh, to call and, uh, you know, bounce ideas around, or if you, you have a sudden need for uh, additional capacity or you want a white label you know, the, uh, the offering, right? Uh, we can work out all kinds of uh, opportunities with you and support you and, and help you succeed as well as making sure that your reputation, you know, grows and improves, right? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's something to be said for working with kind of your, your local 
um, you know, your local operation as to as opposed to the the mega corporation. Now, granted, yeah, we're growing, and uh, we certainly have our sights being set on being a you know multi billion dollar business. But the fact is, we know you know where we're coming from and who's who's important, um, and we're never going to lose sight of that. So, um, awesome. you know, yeah, we've we've gotten tremendous feedback. I mean, the the if any of you are familiar with the Robin Robbins boot camp. Uh, the feedback we got, it's just, it's so, A, it was great to be out in public uh, yeah. meeting people and, and and B, the number of people who came up and said, yep, already work with you. Love you guys. You know, you helped me close this deal, that deal. You know, I got, uh, you know, room in the budget. By the way, uh, storage is also being considered a critical element for cybersecurity budgets. So if you're in a situation where, you know, somebody's like, well, I, I, you know, the price is great, but I, I still, I've already blown my storage budget for the year. Ask them if they have some cybersecurity dollars, um, yeah. that immutability capability, right. And, and, and how it plays into the ransomware protection, uh, certainly can qualify under, uh, alternative budget line items. That's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. So speaking of, speaking of money, right. Uh, we, we, we sell in one of two ways. Um, you know, if you sign up as a, as a reseller, right, you certainly can, uh, go the pay, pay as you go route, right. Uh, as a reseller, you can set the price. Um, yes, you're going to compete with the list price that, uh, is on the Wasabi website, but, you know, throw in your support contracts, throw in consulting services, throw in the, the, the PS uh, professional services type engagements for, you know, configuring their backup applications and figuring out, you know, what they need to back up and how they need to apply immutability certainly can justify, you know, pulling down some more dollars or you just leave it where it is, right? And just tack on those services and go make uh, big margins on uh, using your brains. Uh, we also have reserve capacity. Um, and, uh, this is great because when you sell reserve capacity, you can offer an even better price. Um, so whether it's one, three or five years, um, combined with higher, uh, capacity offerings, typically starting at about 25 terabytes, um, you can go even lower, right? You can even, you can look like an absolute hero. Um, we talked about this. I'll hit it real quick. Uh, we do have certifications for GDPR, HIPAA, FERPA, CGIS, Motion Picture uh, Association, if you're working with anybody in the uh, multimedia space. So we've done the heavy lifting to get, uh, you know, validated uh, for meeting the uh, requirements for these, uh, for these uh, marks. Um, as we said, we've been talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's huge. Oh, ab absolutely. And, and even if folks are not right? You know, requiring these things, it gives, it gives them a, a higher degree of confidence in what you're offering. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, you know, when you take a look at um, most MSPs, most MSPs are, are smaller organizations, uh, not all, but, um, you know, you want to be able to compete um, with any of your competition and to be able to have a partner like Wasabi that um, has done all the legwork to make sure that from a regulatory compliance perspective that uh, you are, you know, they've got your back and, you know, things are protected for you. Um, that, that gives you a huge uh, competitive advantage um, to be able to have that firepower. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're doing some great stuff with some big names and uh, definitely would say, come, come out, come over to the website and check out the, uh, the uh, customer references that we've got. Um, and I, as I promised earlier, right, you know, our technology alliances and, and there's no slide big enough. Um, you know, a lot of folks love working with Veeam. We do too. Rubric, Commvault, Veritas, MSP360, right, kind of that all-in-one uh, that we do a tremendous amount of business with them in terms of uh, backup and uh, DRAS. Um, so, it's all there. And if, if for some reason uh, you are working with an application that is not covered under the 350 knowledge base articles that we have on uh, online, uh, drop us a line, you know, send a, send a, send a note to, uh, you know, support or sales at wasabi.com. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Last but not least, 
Um, and I know we're bouncing around a little bit. I apologize. But uh, I talked about the uh, account manager. And so if you do, in fact, want to, uh, you know, take a chunk of storage and resell it, uh, we do have a tool uh, available to you uh, that will allow you to uh, manage sub accounts. You can set the pricing differently for each and every sub account. Um, gives you insight into the usage, provides uh, API for automatically pulling billing information out, you know, makes it drop dead simple. It's literally a turnkey operation for you to bring cloud object storage into your portfolio. All right. Um, all right. So I think we've rounded the corner. You know, why? Why would you sell or resell Wasabi Cloud Storage? Again, I think the number one most compelling thing here is the predictable pricing, right? No surprises. Nobody likes a surprise. And, uh, you know, I heard through the grapevine that there's some other folks out there that are uh, asking for three-year commitments. Um, yeah, we don't require that. Um, you, you can go month to month. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you want to sign up today as a reseller, the process is so simple and the minimum, get, get this, you're, you're not going to believe this, the minimum amount of storage that you need to get started, one terabyte. Oh, wow. That, there's no reason not to give it a shot. I mean, one terabyte. Yeah. Um, and in fact, if you're not even sure if it's going to work, sign up for the free trial account today. All right. One terabyte, 30 days. If you need more time, shoot a note to support. Uh, they can extend the time for you. If you're trying to do some POCs, make sure it's going to work for you. But what's not to love? Right. Uh, the, immu the immutability, right? You know, that gives you a tremendous uh, story in terms of ransomware mitigation. Uh, for all of our resellers, we have, a, we have a massive partner portal, tons of campaigns in a box, tons of education, tons of marketing material. You don't have to figure out how to sell Wasabi. We've done it all for you. Just go into the partner portal grab what you need, get going. Um, and as we started off at the beginning, right? Data gravity, that is, that is really the foundational element building a customer lifetime value, right? If you've got their data and you're taking good care of it and you're giving them a good price, you can build you know, even more opportunity and services around that just by doing, being a steward of your customer's data. That's great. All right, so, oh wait, there's, I, I forgot to bring in, uh, bring in my buddy, Nate. Hopefully you guys have seen the Nate videos. If you haven't, uh, Google Nate Wasabi. Uh, there's Migrate with Nate. We've got a great new uh, ransomware uh, education piece with Nate right now. Uh, you'll laugh, you'll cry, um, <laughs> you know, make some popcorn, call the kids, bring over the neighbors. <laughs> Um, I'm channeling my, uh, my yeah. uh, late, late night with David Letterman. Right. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. But, um, yeah. you know, bottom line, right. We, we, we take our, we take our resellers, you know, seriously, it is a partnership. Um, we have a personality, uh, as you can probably tell just from me being here. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're a lot of fun to work with. At the and end that's of the, day. the so, beauty. I mean, that's the beauty. I mean, we, we want, um, as, as MSPs um, with our clients, we want to develop partnerships. Um, we don't want it to be a client vendor relationship um, because again, we want it for the long term. Now, same thing when it comes to the vendors that we work with, you know, we don't want it to be a client vendor relationship or, or an MSP right. vendor relationship. We want it to be a partnership. You know, we want someone that um, is going to stand behind us, um, be there for us um, in the good and the bad, because as we know in IT, um, there are no promises, there's no guarantees in, in anything that's IT related. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, you know, I, I like to say, in fact, I just mentioned this on our, our weekly call yesterday is um, when I sell managed services, I like to talk about it's more of the crystal ball approach to managing IT than the magic eight ball. Um, yeah. And <laughs> try well, back later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, even though we have insight into their environment in the in the things that we're doing, um, there isn't a magic wand. Technology isn't black and white. There's many shades of gray in between. And, you know, and it's just IT is IT. Um, but what's 
what makes the difference though is having a vendor like Wasabi to stand behind you and support you. Um, and, and also putting together the tools that you mentioned, because that is such a critical component. Um, you know, not everybody has someone in marketing in, in their MSP. Um, so to be able to take something that you can brand as your own, oh, yeah. put out there is huge. Um, Piece of cake. You can hit the ground running and start promoting a new service in your organization. And, um, and you guys have made it easy, uh, made it easy to sign up as a partner. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, we'll wait just another moment here. Um, we just had the one question that came in so far. That just means, uh, Drew, you've done an awesome job at delivering <laughs> details um, that you you know left nobody with questions. Um, so um, actually, I, I, I'll, I'll bring up a question that I'll answer myself. So yeah. a, a lot of times I get questions about uh, immutability, right? Is there an additional cost for using immutability? No, not at all. Um, but the beautiful part is if you, is, as you bring your customers over to leverage immutability, um, you know, typically you're, they're locking up that storage for, you know, months or maybe even years. Right. Right. So as you develop, right, your spiel around ransomware mitigation and leveraging, uh, leveraging immutability, you, you, you're only going to accelerate their use of storage. And because it's so inexpensive, there's not a lot of pain behind them saying, all right, you know, give me a couple, you know, give me 10 more uh, terabytes, give me 20 more terabytes, right? I mean, the data is growing 40 to 80% year over year anyway, right? Give them a, give them a clear path that, that keeps them in a happy place so they can spend that money on other things in terms of, you know, security audits and so forth. Um, and then the other thing, you know, to that is, uh, we, I highly encourage everyone to exercise their backups, right? right? And to do that with anybody else, you're, ha you're going to pay a fee to pull that data back from the cloud and check the integrity of the data. With Wasabi, I absolutely encourage you to do that. There is no fee for you to pull your data back and check the integrity of it. You should be doing that on a consistent basis. I'm preaching to the choir here, okay? But the last thing in the world, right? The last thing in the world you want to have is that phone call in the middle of the night. Hey, man, we've been hacked. We're down. Right. And suddenly you find out that the on prem or the off prem backup was, you know, a bunch of zeros for the last week. Right. Right. Um, we encourage you to, to for, you know, good security practices, you know, use multi factor authentication, you know, principle of least privilege, all that great stuff. It's all supported in what Wasabi does. So there, yeah, I threw, I threw, I threw myself my own softball. There you go. <laughs> well, with that being said, um, what I want to do is announce our winner here. Um, it doesn't look like we have any additional questions that come in. Um, I spun the prize wheel and a Mackenzie Clapper, Mackenzie Clapper with more field communications. She is the winner of the uh, the turntable, which is awesome and. Uh, that is that's is great. So we will, um, Drew, I will get her information over to you to follow up with Mackenzie. And so she can get that information. Um, and everybody, we will be getting out um, information about the replay. So if um, you have other people in your organization that you want to share this with, or if there are other um, uh, MSPs, any uh, friends of yours, colleagues that you want to share um, please feel free to share that, pass it along. Um, it's one of the beauties of our channel is uh, uh, we have such a, a sharing community. Everybody wants to help each other out. And uh, that's what I love about, um, about the, the group. So the community that we, we live and work in. So um, with that being said, Drew, thank you so much uh, for your time and all of your uh, knowledge today. It's greatly appreciated. Um, everybody else, thank you for being here. We will talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.